In this video, I'm going to talk about in this video, I'm going to talk about translations of an absolute value function. So basically, what I'm going to do, uh, similar to my previous video, I'm going to translate this function. So I'm going to move it up, down, left, and right. Now, what we're going to do here is we're actually going to do multiple translations. So we're going to do left and down, or right and down, or something to that effect. We're going to use both of them, not just one of them. Okay, so we're going to translate our basic uh, absolute value function. So here's our very, very basic absolute value function so that the vertex is at negative one, negative three. Now, right there is kind of a new word for us, vertex. We can go over kind of what that is here in a second. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna translate it first. We're gonna write the, form, the, uh, the notation for it first, then we're gonna graph it, okay? Then we're gonna graph it. All right, so um, first thing that I wanna do, actually, uh, to get an idea of what I'm moving around, I'm going to actually take this function and graph it first. Okay, so what an absolute value function looks like, it basically looks like a V. Okay, went over that in my previous video. Basically, it looks like V, so I'm going to go up one over one, up one over one, up one over one. Same thing on the other side, up one left one this time, up one left one, up one left one. Okay, so it basically looks like a V, is what an absolute value function looks like. All right, now, when I, uh, when I translate it, I want to translate, as it says in the directions, translate the vertex. Now, what's the vertex? Now, if you remember uh, from your geometry, vertexes of, of polygons, of shapes, are the corners. So, now when I look at this shape, the vertex is going to be the corner. Basically, the only corner that I have here on this shape is right down here at the bottom, where it changes from going downhill to uphill. Um, this right here is going to be my vertex. Okay, so on a absolute value function, right there is where the vertex is going to be. Okay, it's where it changes from going downhill to uphill. Now, if you've also done some studies of a parabola, parabolas are those smiley face looking shapes. Um, the vertex is again kind of in the same spot where it's at the bottom of the smiley face or um, bottom of the cup, the bowl, whatever you want to call it. But anyway, um, back to what we're doing here. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to take this vertex and we're going to move it. So the vertex is at negative one, negative three. So actually I'm going to plot that. Let me get a different color here. I'm actually going to plot that right off the bat. So negative one, negative three. So negative one, negative one, negative two, negative three, right down here. So that's where everything is going to move to. That's where everything is going to move to. So it looks like I'm going left one and then down three. Now that description right there can give you a, a big hint on what the notation is going to look like, what the actual function is going to look like. All right, so let's look at the notation first and then we'll get to the graphing. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my f of x function and I'm going to change it, I'm gonna change it so by taking the function and as I said earlier, we're gonna go, we're gonna go left one and down three. So I'm gonna go left one and I'm gonna go down three. Okay, so notice the notation here. Left, if I go left and right, it's inside the parentheses with the x. Um, so I'm going, this is left, this is left one. I know left you think of a negative number, but when it's inside the parentheses like this, we gotta kinda think it's opposite of what you think, is what I usually call it. So if, if you ever have plug a number inside of a parentheses, it's opposite of what you think. So left one is gonna be a plus one. And then if I wanna go down three, it's, it's exactly what you think on the outside. We're gonna go down three over here. So that's the change that I'm going to make. That's the notation right there of the change that I'm gonna make. All right, now I'm gonna decide a, a letter for my new function, for my blue one that I have here. Um, I would just stick with the traditional, we'll just stick with G. G of X is gonna be my new function, and the new function is gonna, I'm gonna take the old one, and I'm going to move it left one, and I'm gonna move it down three, okay? So that's what it's gonna look like. So then I have to take my original function, I'm going to add one directly to the X, and then I'm gonna subtract three on the outside. So take X plus one on the inside of the absolute value, and then also minus three. So my new g of x function, I don't really have to do any simplifying, is going to be absolute value x plus one, absolute value, close that up, minus three. Okay, so that is what the function is going to look like. So that's what the notation looks like, and that's what the function is. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, now let's graph this thing. Okay, now let's graph this thing. Now if I go, now actually all these points are gonna be relatively in the same position. We're just moving everything left one and down three. So then all of my points are going to be in the same spot. I'm going to have a point here, I'm going to have a point here, I'm going to have a point here, point here, I'm going to have a point here, I'm going to have a point here, there, and also there. Okay, just moving everything 
Left one and down three. Looks like I got an extra point there. Okay, left one, down three. Okay, this one here, left one, down three. Okay, this one here, left one, down three. All of them did that. This one here, left one, down three. Okay, this one here, left one, down three. Every single point did that. Okay, and now I have my new, now I have my new g of x function. I have my new g of x function. So this one here is g. Okay, it looks like I didn't do what I was supposed to. This right here is my f function. Forgot to do that. Forgot to label it. Okay, so now I know the difference between my f function and my g function. So that's my new one. Okay, uh, that's a quick video on doing uh, what I would like to call multiple translations of an absolute value function. What I mean by multiple translations is we're moving, so we're moving left one and then down three. So that would be multiple translations.